So I'm not an expert in this, but I have been using the tool called Gluco that everybody that sets up an account with Omnipod, I believe initially when they first set it up, they end up also having to set up an account with Gluco. And Gluco is basically a pretty detailed way of looking at your insulin, the carbs that you ate, and how you're doing in terms of your blood sugar management that I found to be more helpful because it's more detailed than uh, Dexcom and also like the, uh, what's it called, Dexcom Clarity, because it shows you the insulin. Uh, you know, Dexcom, if you're using an Omnipod, it really doesn't know how much insulin you're taking. So it's pretty cool to see your blood sugar on a day-to-day -day basis with a bunch of graphs and all that kind of stuff, along with how much insulin you were using. So I just wanted to remind everybody that if you do have an Omnipod and you, well, assuming you have a, an Omnipod dash or a, a Omnipod 5, you very likely set up Gluco when you first got your account and you may have forgotten if you're not using it. Um, but I briefly just wanted to step through some of the some of the screens and some of the things that I look at that I find helpful. And uh, by no means am I an expert, but it's pretty cool. So I just wanted to point people out to it. So uh, let me just share my screen real quick. Okay, so this is uh, the Gluco homepage. And on the top right, there is a login. So you're going to just click on login. I really had no idea what my login info was at first, but uh, I just wrote it down. So you may need to just um, double check or reset your password or something, or it might be the same as your uh, Omnipod settings. But once you log in, you'll see that I'm logged in up here. Uh, you're going to see summary graphs, logbook, history, insights, and devices. So there's a lot of information here and it can get overwhelming. So I don't want to go crazy with any of it, but you can really just focus on even the summary. So looking at the summary here, you'll see the, uh, this is me. Um, the time period that I'm looking at is the last two weeks. And I want to look at uh, basically Dexcom values. You could click on BG if you were actually um, putting in BG values, but I'm not. So CGM. Okay, so scroll down a little bit. Uh, First thing you can see is sort of like time and range uh, color-coded. So 96% time and range, 4% high, no lows, thankfully. So that's cool. Uh, GMI, this is a number that you've probably seen from the Dexcom Clarity as well. But this is basically your, uh, your A1C. It's not exactly the same, but it's an estimate based on your average blood sugar. So you can see mine right now is an estimated 6.5. Uh, I know that just for context, like for my last A1C, my GMI also said 6.5, but my A1C turned out to be 6.1. So it was a little lower in my case. I think it can be lower or higher, it just depends, but it's cool to see. Uh, again, you also get to see your average blood glucose. Your SD is standard deviation, which means how much it, it typically like fluctuates above and below that average. You want that to be generally lower. Um, it means a little bit more stability, so that's cool. On the right is also helpful. Again, this is stuff that you're not really going to see in clarity. And this is why I start to, to think that this is very beneficial. Uh, so you'll see the units on average for the last, remember, it's the last two weeks. So you can you can change this to be whatever you want. But um, I'm using about 13 units of basal insulin a day, and I'm using about 18 units of bolus insulin a day for, on average, a total of around 31 units. So partic particularly for uh, Omnipod 5 users, this is cool to see because you don't really have a basal rate. You know, it's coming from those automated adjustments and you can look on the Omnipod controller to see this, but it's also just nice to see it here as well. Scrolling down a little bit more, again, you can just sort of see like on average over the past two weeks, like where some of the fluctuations are. You know, for me, like when I do have a high, it tends to be overnight when I screwed something up before I went to sleep. Um, and I can sort of see that in this dashed line up here. So. You can also see diet. Again, this is just the the carbs that I typically on average enter um, over that two-week period. And then lastly, I'm always in automated mode. I don't really ever use uh, manual mode. So you can see that too. So that's summary. Again, I would just play around with like the, the time period just to get a sense for how you're doing. And then look at the insulin, some of this other stuff here. Uh, the graphs are also pretty helpful. So if you go to the top and you click on graphs, You're going to see the same time period. So it's also for two weeks here. And here you're going to see uh, the average glucose over those those days, along with the carbs and the insulin that I took. So this I find this one um, 
pretty cool because it tells me like on average, okay, I was at 270 carbs here and that was 33 three units. This was a really high carb day, a 380 carb day with 35 units. And again, I can see that it's Sunday. So sometimes my personal diet routine and my exercise routine changes on the weekend. So it's helpful for me to sort of see that fluctuation here. So I find this very beneficial as well. Now, again, you can see sort of like an expanded view of the summary that we looked at on the, on the previous page here. So time and range, average units of insulin, average units for, for, for both basal and bolus, um, and then corrections. So I do a lot of corrections because I like to be pretty uh, pretty aggressive with my insulin. So um, yeah, I'm doing a lot of corrections. Lastly, well, there's a ton here, but I'm only gonna show this, uh, this overlay here next. So when this one loads, this is a spaghetti graph. And you'll see why it's called that because it, like, it looks like a bunch of spaghetti. So this can be overwhelming to look at, but if you load us up here, there's sort of a color code for each day of the week. So Monday has this yellow. So if I just click here, if I just click, you know, when it turns uh, blue, when my mouse comes over it, it'll just show me Mondays, which I think is really helpful. Cause again, if you hover over the points here, you know, so I was at 1 AM, I was at 178. So you can sort of see these highs overnight when I do have them and then comes down a little bit. So now basically this is around when I wake up, 150 and so on and so forth. So if you want to on you want to click on two days, you can also click on Tuesday, Tuesday. So you got Monday and Tuesday now. If you want to uncheck them, you can see all of them. If you want to just click on another day, you just click on it and so on and so forth. So I find that really helpful. Um, I think the only other thing is uh, I think calendar is pretty cool. So calendar, again, there's so much data here. Sometimes you got to just take some time and poke around to see what it actually is. But I just clicked on one of those days. And so here is just April 22nd. And again, I can hover over and see my glucose at any period of the day. And then below it, you'll see that it has carbs. So here at 1114, I believe this is when I had breakfast on this day. I had 75 grams of carbs. And I had an insulin bolus dose for that those carbs of uh, three point seven five units. You'll see here, you know, after breakfast, which I think was oatmeal at the time, you know, it did go up a little bit higher than I wanted. And then I did some corrections. So you can see here if I go when when it was high above, like I can come back down here, and I did a. It suggested a 0.45 correction, but I actually did a one point five unit correction. As I mentioned, I like to be pretty aggressive with some of the stuff to sort of teach the system faster. So that's what that happened there. Uh, and then I did another correction later on. Lastly, down on the bottom, so OP5 basal. So I talked about the fact that there's really no set basal rate. It's kind of just giving you those little pulses in the background when it feels like you need them. Um, the red is when it was suspended. So when the, the red icon or the red, I guess it's a rectangle appears, that means that you, for whatever reason, probably were we're going lower or trending downward, and the system felt that you didn't need uh, bolus insulin for that time period. So you can sort of see that. So um, here's what's going on in my case for all of those times. And if you saw like really extended ones, you might be curious, like you might be taking overly aggressive corrections, or you might be uh, taking too much insulin for perhaps your insulin to carb rate ratio might be off or something. And therefore your blood sugar was coming down faster than it should. So getting the hang of some of this stuff and just kind of poking around to see what's going on with your daily trends in terms of your blood sugar, your insulin, and your carbs can be very, very helpful. And this is also, I believe, the system that your doctor is going to use. So my particular doctor, um, they didn't have an, a gluco account set up yet when I began on the Omnipod 5, just because I was their first patient on it and they didn't have it. But most endocrinologists, I, I understand, are going to use glucose. So like when you first set up your um, your pump, you're going to set up the glucose account, and then there's going to be a share. There's a share setting. I can't remember where it is. Maybe it's in settings. Yeah, so it is in settings. So you, there's this account field here. And uh, like I'm sharing it. I'm in a, a clinical trial, so I share it with them. And then this is my doctor who did get the account later on. So Essentially, when you're a new patient, you're going to set up the account. You're going to come to this add new code. Your doctor's going to give you a code. You enter it here, and then they have access to all of this information. So the more familiar you get with it, the better sort of questions you'll ask when you have 
appointment, you'll just be more educated as a patient. The other cool thing I could imagine is I don't have kids, but you could potentially, if your kid had type one, I think it's very feasible that you could log in uh, to see all this information for them. So, you know, depending on if your kid is managing their type one themselves. So like if they had not got five and they were using the controller to give themselves insulin and all that kind of stuff, you may not have insight into that beyond like the follow-up. Um, but if this is something that you wanted to see and you wanted to help your kid manage or just see how they were doing, uh, if you had this account information, you could certainly log in here and see in a very detailed fashion what was going on on a day-to-day -day basis uh, from that kid. So anyway, there's a lot more to learn here, I'm sure. I have to learn myself, but uh, Luco is pretty cool. So I would recommend um, trying to log in first step, looking at the summary, and then poking around the different uh, different um, graphs and sections of the of the site to see if it can be helpful. So hope that is helpful, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.